This video is sponsored by Skillshare. I've had the new iPad mini in this gorgeous purple color for about a month now, and I'm here to bring you my review. There are a lot of people who watch my channel either for digital planning, aesthetic tech, creative tutorials, but the iPad is what unites it all. And while I do review things like the iPad on my YouTube channel, I am far less interested in regurgitating the specs and things you can just Google on the Apple website. Specs do matter sometimes, but what matters most is the human experience of it. Sure, bezels or chins or refresh rate or other terms you'll hear YouTubers bring up about these different devices comes up, but that's not human. Some things like that do make or break our experience, but I want to bring you the experience, starting with the gym. The iPad mini is a great device to take to the gym for things like cycling or yoga. One big thing I appreciate having my iPad mini for is going to the gym. It's honestly such the perfect size for following along to the Apple Fitness Plus workouts. So of course I could use my iPhone, but I really like having the larger display that the iPad mini offers over my current iPhone. And the iPad Pro is just a little bit too big to be taking to the gym and being discreet with working out with the iPad. It's just one of those life improvement things that I wasn't expecting whenever I first started using the new iPad mini. One thing that I did know that I was going to use the iPad mini for the second it was announced during the Apple event was as a sketch pad. I seriously cannot tell you how many times I had a great idea and no great way of really getting it down and drawing it out. I definitely did the whole thing of drawing out my notes with my fingertip on my iPhone at 2 a.m. and then the balancing act of trying to draw out my ideas on the big iPad Pro 12.9 inch. But the iPad mini is just the perfect notebook size to whip it out and copy down whatever I need to get out. I'm not gonna lie, another thing that really enticed me about the new iPad mini were the gorgeous new colors. So I have my iPad mini in this gorgeous purple color. It's absolutely flawless and I don't think I'm going to be able to resist anything by Apple if they continue to come out with their devices in purple. Plus the fact that the new iPad mini is basically a squished down mini version of the new iPad Air, has touch ID, the beautiful display, and it just packs all of this power in a really nice form factor. I honestly just have cute aggression over the new iPad mini. With the gorgeous new colors that the mini is now available in, it just adds to the experience of the iPad or device just being yours and being more customizable. I like tech with a little personality. All right, and now it's time to talk about the thing, the thing that keeps being brought up, this thingy thing, and for some reason it bothers me so much that people keep bringing it up and people keep asking me, but I get the concern and I wanted to bring it up in this iPad review video. And if you've watched a number of these or watched any iPad mini videos, you probably know that I am about to say Jelly Scroll. So I got a comment about Jelly Scroll literally the day I uploaded my iPad mini first look unboxing and I had to Google what it even meant or what it even was because it's something I've never really seen or encountered on any of my devices. So I haven't noticed this on my iPad mini like at all. I genuinely can only see the issue in videos that I have watched on YouTube when the camera footage is slowed down so I'm able to see that kind of wave or scroll effect. So if you're not aware of what Jelly Scroll is, essentially it looks like one screen is scrolling faster. So let's say the right side of the screen is scrolling faster than the left side when you use the iPad mini in vertical or portrait mode. So there are a lot of reasons why some people might be seeing this effect and I won't go into detail of how the iPad was created and how screens work for you to be able to see that. But genuinely, bottom line is, lights do really weird things and screens are essentially just a bunch of lights. There are some people though who can see the jelly scroll and probably have really superb eyes IRL, but I, I personally am not able to detect it and I've done jelly scroll tests on my iPad mini and I still can't see it, but again, if you are one of those very few people who can see the jelly scroll, a lot of people say it's 
difficult to unnotice something like that. But again, I wanna focus on the experience of this review and have I had any experience with Jelly Scroll throughout my month now of using the iPad mini? The answer is no, none whatsoever. There's literally no experience with Jelly Scroll that I have um, dealt with on the iPad mini. I honestly didn't even know what Jelly Scroll was at first, never heard the term until I got the new iPad mini. So I don't think necessarily that Jelly Scroll should influence your decision in whether or not you should get an iPad mini. But if you do seem to be one of those types of people who catch every little thing, or maybe you hyper fixate on certain things like screens and stuff like that, maybe it might be a good idea to go to the Apple store or an Apple retailer who has iPad minis on display for you to check it out and test it out for yourself. Personally, I don't use the iPad mini in portrait mode as much as I do in landscape mode anyway. I do a lot of gaming and media consumption and I tend to use my iPads always in landscape mode, but the instances I have used it in portrait mode, usually when I'm taking notes or reading articles and stuff, I honestly haven't noticed it. But I also don't have x-ray eyes and haven't ever really encountered Jelly Scroll on any of my devices before, and I certainly haven't noticed on the new iPad mini. The iPad mini is certainly an on-the-go device. I've taken this everywhere without even really having a reason to take it. Admittedly, I am kind of attached to the iPad mini. I think of it like my phone in that anytime I wanna go out of the house, I wanna make sure I have my phone, my keys, my wallet, and my iPad mini. I'm not really sure why, but it honestly feels wrong leaving the house without it. So I've taken it to the grocery store for a shopping list, to a baby shower where it literally sat in my bag the whole time and wasn't used. I've taken it on walks, taken it to the gym for workouts. I haven't tried using it as a phone replacement. I do have the cellular unit, but I could see how it might be like a bigger phone for a lot of people. If you don't already have an iPad though, I'll be honest, I don't know if you should go for the mini as your first iPad. Just because when I think about people who want to get an iPad, I think about things like note-taking, illustration, watching movies, gaming, which I've proven you can do all on the iPad mini, and I'll be sure to link all my videos below on note-taking, digital planning, gaming, Procreate. There's honestly no problem at all doing that on the iPad mini, but I'd probably go for the new iPad Air. It's going to be your first iPad. I think the iPad Air is just a great middle range iPad to start with. I've said it before about the Air in my past videos when the Air first came out, but with the Air you're getting the Pro-like experience without the iPad Pro-like price. And I honestly think it's just a great first iPad to start with. I like having the mini as a companion iPad, something I can use to kind of increase the quality of life along with my iPad Pro. So if you're looking for more ways to get creative with your iPad or your new iPad mini, if you have one, today's video sponsor is a great place to start. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives like yourself, and they're always adding new classes to keep you engaged in learning new things. Instead of piecing together everything you wanna learn through Google searches and separate blog posts and just all kinds of things, Skillshare really brings it all together through video lessons and a class project with some of the world's industry leaders and working professionals. It's really where I got started gaining confidence using Procreate on the iPad. I've mentioned previous Procreate classes in my videos before. Some of my favorite are from Liz Colaire Brown and Charlie Clements. And I make a point to try and look into new Skillshare classes each month. This month though, I've been working on developing better routines and better systems for myself for getting things done. And while my iPad is helping a ton with that, I really appreciate the content that I'm learning from another YouTube creator on here who's on Skillshare, Thomas Frank, in his class, Productivity for Creatives, Build a System that Brings Out Your Best. I also have my own Skillshare class all about creating digital planners and I'd love for you to join me over there which is why the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in my description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Anyway, that was my very human and honest review of the new iPad mini from Apple. I really adore this thing. It's done a lot of really small things to kind of improve the quality of life that has just had a huge effect. If you found this video helpful, give it a like and leave a comment down below. I'm interested in hearing your thoughts or your questions about the new iPad mini. And also do me a favor and hit the subscribe button. It really helps me out a ton and let me know that you would like to see more content just like this. Don't forget to check 
Don't forget to check out Skillshare and I'll be sure to see you in the next video. Bye.